Miami, but I believe that Dallas's season absolutely rides on Sunday night. Let me make my point quickly here. If the Eagles win this game, they're going to win the division. Of that, there is basically no question. If they do, that means for the Cowboys to get to the Super Bowl, they will have to beat San Francisco and Philadelphia, both on the road. Check mate. The Cowboys have to win Sunday. Must win. They don't get to the Super Bowl if they don't. The road would be too difficult. And for the Cowboys to win, Micah Parsons, the guy that we just heard from, he's got to show up. He's a great player. Philadelphia minimizes him. That's why I have felt that when the Dallas Cowboys play the Eagles, they can't beat them. I have felt that way just because they minimize Micah Parsons. Schematically, they take him out. Micah Parsons has never had a third down sack versus the Philadelphia Eagles. That's where he is the best player in football in those situations. They double team him on a consistent basis. So for Dallas to slow down Philly's offense and to finally win that meaningful game that's going to place him into that we can win the division conversation this year, Micah Parsons has got to be the best player on the field. The Cowboys are going to win. How are they going to do it? Well, I would say this, uh, wide receiver C.D. Lamb being matched up on the weakest link for the Philadelphia Eagles in their offense, and that's Eli Ricks. He really feasted in that first matchup. And you look at last week versus the San Francisco 49ers. They took their third receiver in Jawan Jennings and basically ate Eli Ricks up. So I think that's his deficiency for Philly. And I'm interested to see how Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, and also C.D. Lamb, how they're going to fare but up against them. Philly cannot play. Real quick, when C.D. goes inside, yeah. Philly cannot play man coverage. Nope. Uh, not a, I don't care if it's fourth and one. You can't. They, 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 unless Slay goes inside, and only Slay, versus C.D. Lamb, you cannot play man. So I feel like what you're saying here, just to sort of make it as simple as we can, the Cowboys should have matchup advantages on the outside, however it is you play it, whether they With move. With C.D. Lamb or Ferguson, big time. Well, my, that's my point, is, is that where, if they're going to move him inside and Slay's going to come inside with him, then someone else is going to have an advantage somewhere else. And you mentioned Ferguson, the big tight end. He's really emerged as a huge part of this offense. Yeah, I mean, for Philadelphia, Darius Slay and James Bradbury are going to show up. I mean, they make $20 million, over $20 million this year at corner. They got to show up. I don't, maybe that's part of, like, they got to protect the middle of the field with other people and say, hey, number two and 24, Slay and Bradbury, you guys are soloed up by yourselves on the outside this week. This is a game that you got to go earn your paycheck. And one way or another, our friend Kimberly here, she earned her degree in psychology. <laughs> From Wesley, and so how about that part of it? How about the psychological piece of this, particularly for the quarterback of the Cowboys who gets talked about more than any other player in the NFL? Oh, you think Dak Prescott gets talked about more than any other player? He gets talked about this. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure that's the quarterback that yeah. gets talked about the most. Uh -huh. um, listen, the psychology of it is you got spanked by the 49ers. But... <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Um, <laughs> this is a game where you have to win because right now the 49ers have outclassed everybody in the division. Now if you can't at home where you are, you've won the last 14 at home. You've got your rival in the division coming to your building. You have to win this game. Like, you have to because not just it's not just about the division. It's about the, the road to the playoffs, and it's about the road to the Super Bowl. What happens if Dallas doesn't win this game? What is the, what's the outlook of them in this division and on the road? I don't know if they're going to be able to get to the Super Bowl. Now, that's it. I, I think if they don't win this Sunday, then all this conversation becomes Correct. moot. I mean, at the end of the day, their schedule the rest of the way is harder than the Eagles. The Eagles would essentially have a two-and-a-half game lead in the division. Philly would only have to concern themselves with the Lions or the 49ers sneaking up on them for the one seed. But no way Dallas would win the division. And what three letters? So D. Wood and I, we had, he walked in this morning. I was very impressed. We're sitting yes. there. I thought he was going into another Hall of Fame today. With Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. 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 We'll see how the Maybe. show goes. I might get a call during the show. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. But one way or another, there were three letters that you want to attach to Dak Prescott's name. And what letters are those? MVP. MVP. Like, Dak Prescott is playing at that type of level. I know we're going to get into more discussion about who are the other candidates. Right. I know Dan, stop looking at me like that, okay? <laughs> like, you know, we're we're going to talk about that guy with the, with the 49ers, uh, playing quarterback for the 49ers. But Dak Prescott, regardless, I know everyone talks about, oh, his opponents. Dak can only play the teams that are scheduled, yeah. okay? And if Dak was playing bad, we would be we would be the same people on here trashing Dak Prescott playing bad. Dak Prescott is playing at an elite elite level at the quarterback position. He's taking command, not only at the line of scrimmage, but using his legs. He's doing everything he's supposed to do yeah. playing the quarterback I, position. I don't disagree. Like, mm -hmm. I, I've, I have last week or two weeks ago I said, if he plays the next stretch like he has this past stretch, yeah. mm -hmm. he'll win MVP. Yeah. The question is, like, is this the biggest game of Dak Prescott's career? I don't believe that. Last year's playoff against San Francisco or even the year before, 
but this is the best, biggest expectations that Dak Prescott has ever had. If you go back to last year and the loss to San Francisco, it, it was kind of justified or, or almost expected because he didn't play get good last year. He did not play good football. And so if they were going to lose to San Francisco, it was going to be what Dak didn't play well, and that's kind of what happened. If they lose to Philadelphia or if they lose in the playoffs, I don't see forecasting that it'll be because Dak Prescott doesn't play well. That's why I say like this, these are the biggest expectations of his career. It's by far the best that he has played with the best team that he has outside of his rookie year, but his defense wasn't great that year. Yeah, I want to give a quick shout out Mike McCarthy. Okay, because before the season, we all had questions about Mike McCarthy. Keller Moore, he you know, got rid of Keller Moore. Dak Prescott's playing his best, playing his best ball of his career right now. Man, that boy bad. Oh, no, 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 no. Man, that boy bad. That boy bad. Boy. Oh, oh, damn, Greeny. That boy bad. That boy bad. My goodness, Greeny. <laughs> that boy bad. So watch it. Come here. Oh. I'm going. Oh, my goodness. That boy bad. Let's do it again. That boy bad. <laughs> All right, we are delighted to welcome Austin Rivers for his first ever That Boy Bad experience. Harry Douglas, take it away. Everybody ready? <laughs> Let's move it along. The first person that we got on That Boy Bad. Ooh, we got Jordan Love. See, it was cold out there in Green Bay. Uh -huh. Damn, Jordan Love was hot as a tamale. Yes, he was. <laughs> Look at him maneuver the pocket. He's not worried about the Kansas City defense, even though they rank top five in the country right now. Look at his throw. Look at his throw to Christian Watson. Yeah. But ooh, we have a fourth down throw. Mm-hmm. Why you gotta do me like that? Why you gotta do me like that, says Kansas City? Jordan Love, y'all. Guess what? Dead boy bad. Oh, who do we have next? We got Tyree Hill. Light up. Light up. Check this out. Tell me you want to get fired without really telling me you want to get fired if you're the Washington Commanders coaching staff by playing Tyreek Hill this way. Because I don't know. Maybe they don't know. He is the leading receiver in the National Football League. This man is going to eclipse 2,000 yards this year and probably over 16 touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, BB, Cheetah, race car, whatever you call it. Dead boy bad. Oh, last but not least. You're back okay? I got the chain. Last uh -oh. but not least. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hey, hey. Tuck your chain, y'all. Devo coming. Ooh, Devo, Devo coming. coming. Bo, tuck your chain, get rid of it. I got to throw it away. I don't want to snatch a mine. Ooh, you talking about a guy, a physical specimen? Rumbling and rolling. Nobody wants to tackle him. Look at his thighs, Pauls. But look at him run. He's moving along like no other. He's running through arm tackles. The whole defense of the Philadelphia Eagles don't want to tackle him. Debo is that man. He showed up in a black ski mask. Yeah. In a black Air Force F1 Warren's cleats. That means he ready for business. Not business, Greeny. He ready for business. Business. Debo Samuel, dead boy, bad. Better hide that chain. My grandma gave me that chain. Are the Chiefs still the team to beat in the AFC? The Chiefs are still the team to beat, but they're also the most beatable they've ever been mm. with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. We, we haven't seen this offense, and it's fair now in December to say the, the concerns of the offense are real. Outside of just the drops. There is still concerns that both of these tackles have struggled mightily at moments, so you have to cover that up. There is still concern that these wide receivers are not on the same page at a consistent basis or on a consistent basis, you know this, yep. with Patrick Mahomes. And so while they, out of respect, and still the reality of this defense, are the team to beat, this is the, by far the most beatable they've ever been. And I think the, the part of it that at least gives you a little bit of consistent belief in them there's really not an offense in the conference that's going to run away from their defense. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of if Miami is playing at home and they're hot, maybe, but no offense is just going to run away from one of the best five defenses in the conference. Talk to me about Miami. Can Miami win the AFC D Wood? They can if they have home field. Yeah. I think if Miami gets the number one seed, that that that's the. the the two teams, I said Miami and Dallas. Miami needs the home field advantage because down there in South Florida where everyone else is playing in cold weather, now you got to come down to the warm. They don't have to worry about crowd noise, which, which will help even help their offense even more. And with all that speed that they have on offense, they're going to put a lot of pressure on opposing teams coming down there. And I'll say this about Miami, man. We had Javon Holland on our radio show recently. Yeah. And he basically said, I asked him about that defense, right? Yeah. And, and Vic Fangio and how it's starting to come along. He's like, man, he still feels like we ha they have room to, to, mm -hmm. to improve even more. 
So they're really starting to hit their stride. They got Jalen Ramsey back. Since he's been back, they've been playing lights out football from that side of the ball of things. So Miami is definitely a team. If they get Van that Ginkle. whole field advantage, yep. Van Ginkle's he's huge playing good for too. Their defense because he replaces Jalen Phillips. So we got Miami and we got Baltimore and we got Buffalo that some of us think are dangerous. And then what does this say next to your name on my notes? It's Kimberly Kimber Martin. Yeah. What does it say? Chiefs remain the team to beat <laughs> because the AFC has gone through Arrowhead. So until it doesn't, until somebody else stops that from happening, to me, I still you still have the best quarterback in the NFL. You still have one of the best, if not the best, head coaches in the NFL together. And the Patrick Mahomes-Travis Kelsey connection, while it hasn't looked exactly the same as last year, that those two you can believe in. I think they have the experience. Also, I think home field is important for the Chiefs now because they've never had to play on the road. So I think it's particularly important for them to be the top seed. The concern I get, I agree, through Arrowhead. The concern I get about the Chiefs is, is it to a point offensively where when it's the moment and got to have it situations, yeah. is, is Patrick going to look for Travis and just Travis? He we've heard, he right, you know, like we've heard the conversation throughout the season. We, I'll continue to trust him. And he says all the right things. But when it's win or go home, is he really going to look for some of these guys? Like the, the interception the other night to Green Bay, that's 100% because of miscommunication. It, At it, some point... The quarterback goes, I'm not look, I'm not even yeah. going to look your way. It's it, going to go to 87 or run around. It's funny you say that, though, Dan, because I think a lot of things that has happened to that past game is because of miscommunication Tons. with those young receivers. And that's a simple This one, Harry, right? right? Yes. So he's expecting, you know, Sky Moore to continue going. And I understand what Sky Moore is doing. He's saying, okay, that defender's over top. I'm going to look for the back shoulder. But if your, your quarterback isn't expecting you to do that, you can't just do it on your own. I also hate the release off the ball. But, the, the, <laughs> like, you know, the, the big point is, like, like we, can, we can do a one-on-one touch screen for 10 minutes. this wheel route and what's supposed yeah. to happen. Let's just be very clear. What you have just witnessed is the quarterback blaming the receiver and the, the receiver, receiver blaming the quarterback. <laughs>